everyone, this is Sheldon from Shell Rock Art. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing a flip cup today. And I did have a couple of failures. So if I say I'm going to be using a slightly used canvas, that's exactly what that means. I had a couple of fails, but the colors I'm using today is this turquoise here. It's got a little bit of color shift to it. It's a blend. I just used some Amsterdam turquoise and then like a greenish turquoise folk art color shift with it. So it may or may not show through. I just wanted to use up the rest of the paint. And I have here this uh, Canacridone Magenta by Artist Loft. Then this is by Craft Smart. This is just um, like a cadmium yellow. I have white. And I have what's here is from Liquitex called Prism Violet. So these are my five colors I'm going to be using today in the flip cup. So I hope that works out for me. So I'm going to get you down to the canvas in a second. Okay, folks, this is my slightly used canvas I was referring to earlier. You see all the mess that I made on here. So it got a little bit frustrating. And I'm just going to try to get more of this stuff off of the canvas. I saw a nice color pattern. And so I decided to spin it out. And then at one point I spun it too fast and all the cells got really uh, distorted. Or as some people refer to it as being wonky. But that's basically what it means. It's distorted. And you have to admit that sometimes what looks good to you is influenced by what looks good to others. You have to learn what you like. And sometimes we look for other people's approval on our paintings, or we see something they did, and we say, wow, I can't wait, I can't, I would love to do something like that. It doesn't mean that you don't do anything nice. It means that yours just happened not to look like theirs. But one thing I can say, this is by way of this is a sipping pool because I'm sipping on a little bit of a beer right now to calm myself down. So I'm a little bit frustrated at uh, messing up a couple of these. It's not the only one. So what I'm going to do is explain a few things while I'm doing this. Although it's acrylic pour painting and you're pouring it and you cannot predict the absolute final result, there is a measure of control that you can have over your painting. And that one measure of control is you have to know some things to do. You can't just uh, watch a video and say, okay, I'm gonna throw some paint on the canvas and I'm gonna tilt it around from side to side and it's gonna look just like this. It doesn't work that way. The artists that you see doing these, this, these paintings, you have to give a lot of respect to because it took a lot of trial, error, control, and a lot of understanding about physics and timing for these artists to put out such wonderful pieces of work. Um, I'm not going to drop names right now. All I know is that the ones that have helped me out a lot, they know exactly who they are because in many times before, I have mentioned them in my videos. And their work is phenomenal. And without further ado, I'm gonna grab a cup and I'm gonna stack my colors. Well, I'm gonna put my silicone in my cups first and then I'm gonna stack my colors and then we'll go from there. So 
there's my nice clean cup on a dirty canvas. And I'm going to put silicone in all the colors except for the white. Two drops each. Literally, I mean two drops. The six drops of silicone total in this whole piece of work. And you have to stir it in very slowly. What I mean by slowly, I mean like like this. You wanna almost fold it in. Not to create the bubbles, but also not to break up your silicone so much that it forms uh, one of my favorite artists. She calls them caterpillars. And so, I'm going to layer my colors now. So, we start off traditionally a little bit of white on the bottom. That's the traditional way. And I'm just going the way that I saw these artists work. Definitely kind of def definitely going old school. When I say old school, I'm not I wasn't part of that school. I was watching everybody else go to school. And I was playing on the playground. And if you see, I'm putting the white, and then the violet, then the Canacridone magenta. Canacridone, I still love saying that word. And then the yellow, and then the turquoise. Half and half. That should bring my cup to about the halfway mark. And then I'll work my way backwards. I'll do the stack all over again. So, white. And I'll finish that off here. Try to make just enough to cover this canvas. White, then the prism violet. And I'm trying not to put colors together that will get muddy and turn brown. So if you know your color wheel, you know that all your complementary colors, your red and green, your uh, purple and yellow, your blue and orange, they opposite each other on the color wheel because when you put them all together, you got one of each of the primary colors together. So, red, yellow, and blue makes uh, brown like a dark brown. Okay. I hope I got enough color for this. And my cup's not quite full. Three of my colors are already empty. It's my fourth color here. I don't want to over tilt. That's a problem that I've had in the past of over tilting. But, but I do recall that the first one I did had a lot of paint left on the canvas. But I know what I'll do. I'm going to give this a little base of house paint, like I do for the blooms. 
So let me take this off here. I just empty these colors out. Let me take the cup down. Do a bit of a uh, house paint. Uh, that I would normally use for a pillow. And put it on the base. Maybe that'll help my paints move around. I don't need so much paint to, yeah, that should be what I had in the cup. So I'm gonna spread this out a bit. How about? I'm gonna flip right on top of this. It might splash, but let's hope not. Right. So let that run down a little bit. Those few little drops made a couple little cells right there. So while this while we're waiting for that to drain, I'm gonna take another sip. Right there is this color here around is to help the paint move <coughs> to the edges and help keep my cells and the cell structure keeping their shape. Now what happens a lot of times is that you'll find that one will flip and then they'll torch and then they'll start tilting and they'll move their cells all around. So by the time you get all to the sides at all, when they tilt off their last corner, their cells shape like little half C's or little boomerangs or um, little S's like, like this. And that's because they over tilted. So that's what I'm trying not to do. That's why I added this extra paint here. And then I'm going to tilt as much as I can to the edges first before I torch it. That way when I go to tilt it off, I get at least the amount of disturbance to the shape of the cells. So I hope that's coming off right. So let me just pick this up. Side of the cup won't look too bad. Now you see how that's spreading out a little bit? So what I'm trying to say is we're going to go up here and spread it all around. There are bubbles in here like crazy too. But I'm very pleased with this pastel look so far. There's a lot of cells popping up but it's not popping up right away, so that's kind of good. I didn't have too much silicone in it. So now, let me torch this bad boy. And go from there. Beautiful cells growing. 
Ooh, that looks nice. And if I can just keep it that way, I'll be happy. I almost don't want to spin it, but really go slow. Sorry folks, that's what I do. So really go slow. Alrighty, folks. Finally, one I feel great about. So let me get you down for a closer look. I'm gonna turn the camera off and pause it for a second, and I'm gonna get you a closer look. Alright, folks. Here we are. Look at those cells. I am. Very well pleased with this one. He started making the little boomerang shapes toward the edge here. That's because I was spinning them out and the force along the edge of the canvas made those shapes come right along that edge, which is okay because it's symmetrical. But look how the cells maintain their form all throughout though. And look at those colors. Oh, I'm in love with this one. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you for watching. And again, this is Sheldon from Shell Rock Art. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I very greatly appreciate it. And I'll give a big thank you for all those who have subscribed who's given me the encouragement and support to carry on with um, acrylic paint pouring. So, happy pouring to everyone, and please, by all means, stay safe. Good night.